and all comes together in this like amazing spicy blend. My food is the best South American food that you can find in the Bay Area. We almost got into a fight over that upside down cake because we all wanted more of it. Anybody who has that many bubbles, somebody <laughs> really likes bubbles. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. Redwood Credit Union offers personal and business banking, mobile access, and nationwide ATMs. It's banking for people who call this home and the future we're building together. Redwood Credit Union. transplant procedure that didn't just save one life. It saved six. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, graphic designer Yael Handel creates some excitement at her celebratory spot in San Francisco and financial advisor Fred Steingraff returns to his Chilean roots with his on the money pick in Walnut Creek. But first, Tina Tamale Ramos, whose family has been in the restaurant business for 71 years, embraces her seafood-focused spicy spot in Oakland, Alamar. Alamar is a uh, seafood restaurant right here in Uptown Oakland. It is Caribbean and Mediterranean. I'm Chef Nelson German. I am the chef and the owner of Alamar Kitchen Bar here with my wife, May. Alamar came as a passion project for my journeys and my childhood too. Just tells my story as a chef. So from my childhood, that's where we had the Caribbean, Mediterranean for my travels. I learned a lot in Spain, in Italy, and France. And then also there's a lot of original things here too in Alamar, it makes it unique. It's kind of my playground. Alamar, seafood worlds are very unique, very different. It's not necessarily Cajun. It's more an homage to where Cajun came from and the influence of Spain, Italy, and France. So it's kind of like bringing that back to its roots. So Alamar is a fantastic fast casual concept. We want it to make something easy. You just order at the counter, you grab a table, we have a beautiful patio. You can get out of here eating a nice meal within an hour. You know, we want you to get down and dirty, but we want you to leave nice and clean. I make a secret, beautiful salt scrub. I make it myself. It makes your hands smell really nice and makes your hands really soft too. So here at Alamo, we love our warriors. Warriors, the Oakland A's too, I gotta give them props. We have a beautiful gratitude wall too that you gotta to check out. We say thank you to everyone who's helped us along the years. Most importantly, my wife, it's this beautiful lady right here. <laughs> Born and raised in Oakland. Um, she brought me to this beautiful town and I, I couldn't be more grateful. You know, Oakland gave me my first restaurant and the love of my life and uh, I'm just happy. Tina, there are a lot, it's sort of a marriage of many different cultures and flavors and things at Alamar, even though yes. it means, you know, to the sea, Correct. going to the sea. There is a seafood focus. There is that seafood focus, but what I love about Alamar, um, I know the couple who owns it, and Chef Nelson is Dominican, so he's Afro-Latino, and his wife is Asian, so it's so exciting to see the melding of all these different cultures. And he's from New York. He's so. from New York. <laughs> you get that piece of it, but too. But there's the Cajun and the Creole right. and the mm -hmm. Asian and the Latin American, mm -hmm. and it all comes together in this, like, amazing spicy blend. Right. And what do you go... You know, do you crave something when you walk in the door there? I love the boils. Mm -hmm. My uh, significant other, he's uh, from Louisiana. He really loves Cajun Creole food, and that's how we originally found 
found the spot because we were looking for the peel and eat shrimp and the sausage and the and the corn. This is a, a play with your food kind of place. Totally. They give it? you yeah. bibs. Yeah. Fred's yeah. over there shaking oh, yeah. his head. What was your experience it's, at Alamar? It's, it's certainly not for somebody who doesn't want to get dirty. I mean, you you got to dig in. You got to grab the, the crawfish. Don't and, be dainty. No, there's <laughs> nothing dainty about it. And it's, right. it's, it's, right. it's really. It's, well, tell me what you started with when you went. We started off with the plantain I salad. Love that, that that was that was amazing. <laughs> um, big pieces of plantain and mango, just really sweet, juicy mango. Um, my only critique would be I wish that the uh, plantains had been a little bit bigger because the mango tended to, um, to overwhelm overpower it. What a did bit. you start with, Yeah. I started with a guava margarita. Mm -hmm. um, that was surprisingly good. I think guava is one of those flavors that can sometimes taste a bit artificial, kind of like candy, but this was really fresh and it was a little too easy to drink. <laughs> <laughs> they always are. Yep. But mm -hmm. yeah, after that we had the pork ribs. Mm -hmm. Those were really good. That's they new. were super soft. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, they just slid off the bone and, and they what disappeared. was the sauce like? With the, the sauce was kind of a traditional barbecue sauce. Mm -hmm. Sweet, thick. And what else do you get when you go? So you start with the boils. Let's talk a little bit more about the boils because I love the that's boils. their signature. Well, first really, we, when you we, walk into you we know. get our cocktails. So I had mm -hmm. coconut margarita. A couple of my companions had sober and love, which is a mocktail for adults. Mm -hmm. And then we mm -hmm. do the boils. And I love the sauces there. They're all butter based, so you can't go wrong there. <laughs> I love anything drenched in romesco sauce, mm -hmm. and that's one of my favorite sauces. But Right. At the same time, they have the Steph Curry sauce, which is like a, like a Thai curry. Yeah. It's a little sweet, coconutty. That's the one that you had, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And it has a little yeah. bit of a kick to it, which was yeah. really good. It wasn't we, it wasn't too spicy, but it was just enough spice. We to went it. hot on it because it's like mild, hot, uh -huh. fire, inferno. Mm -hmm. And I'm a, even though I'm Latina, I'm a little bit of a wimp for the higher spicy, <laughs> right. like the picante. So I always stick to the lower end, but it's still so flavorful and lots of just garlic and spices and and then the other sauce we had was the creole uh creola crema mm -hmm. which kind of tasted like a remoulade but warm and then and then we did the peel and eat shrimp with the potatoes mm -hmm. and i can eat that sauce with a spoon it's <laughs> delicious <laughs> and what else besides the pork ribs did you we have got the empanadas the chicken empanadas they were good they had a really soft kind of pulled chicken with a really good mm -hmm. sauce um they tasted very fresh and um, how was the dough? Was it the dough was good? Mm -hmm. It tasted homemade. The only complaint would be that we wanted there to be more chicken inside. <laughs> I think someone made the joke about empa nada mm. inside. So oh, no. <laughs> you know, you needed more. Wow. But yeah. the were experience they, was good overall. Okay. Were they I will fried say. or baked? They were baked. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we had the, the fish stew, which was like a bacalao, but in a in a stew. And I believe it was the the rock cod was the mm -hmm. type of fish, really cooked to perfection, just mm -hmm. just perfect. Do you get that dish? I've never had it. I think it's from the new menu. They just revamped their menu this past January, and it's been really exciting to see what changes he's made and what what's. And stayed. Chef Nelson is a big presence, as yes. is May, but Chef Nelson is they're, a big presence both. in the restaurant. Well, May actually mm -hmm. took our order, and mm -hmm. Chef Nelson was in the kitchen. He waved hello. So <laughs> it's it's a really it's a friendly spot. It is. And you can go wash your hands while you're in the, the middle of the restaurant. In the middle, right? and, and <laughs> you at don't the want them end, covered in, you in, get that, in butter. That, that nice little scrub that has that beautiful like herbal smells. I have to ask you though, why are you Tina Tamale? My family made tamales for a really long time, and people would see me out and about and say, Tina, where are the tamales? So it, it just stuck. It just sort of stuck. Yeah. And do you still make tamales? Unfortunately, no, but hashtag never say never. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to carry on that 71-year old tradition. Correct. And Tina, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. For a beautiful melding of different cuisines, spices with seafood and meats, drinks, and amazing people, Alamar's the spot. All right, yeah. Alamar is a great place to go with a group of friends for a fun time and options that'll please everyone. And Fred? If you're looking to spice it up a little bit in Oakland and have some fantastic seafood, Alamar is definitely the place to go. All right, if you would like to try Alamar, it's located on Grand Avenue in Oakland. The telephone number is 510-907-7555. It's open for lunch Tuesday through Friday and dinner Tuesday through Saturday with brunch on the weekends. Reservations are not accepted and the average tab per person without drinks is around $30. Fred's Spot is the only restaurant he knows of in the Bay Area that offers authentic Chilean cuisine. It's a place that reminds him of the food he grew up eating. 
Take a trip to South America at Sabores del Sur. Chilean food is the soul food of Latin America. It's actually rich your soul. It makes you happy. When your tummy is happy, your soul is happy. We use a lot of um, vegetables in it. We eat tomato like crazy. Chileans, they put tomatoes in everything. And they put dulce de leche in everything too. Hola, my name is Giselle Osorio. I'm the chef in honor of Sabores del Sur over here in Wano Creek. Sabores del Sur means flavor from the South. My food is the best South American food that you can find in the Bay Area. If you don't agree with me, it's fine. <laughs> you don't have to agree with me, I believe it. <laughs> My menu is everything that I love. If I didn't love it, it's not in my menu. But the Chilean dishes are all what I grew up eating. Everything that I, I miss from home, I learned how to make over here. A lot of people say the same thing to me. They prefer my empanadas here than the empanadas there. Because the quality of my, my ingredients here is much higher, it's much better. I started this craziness. Uh, in 2003, I took a class with Women's Initiative. La Cocina is a kitchen incubator for women that started their own food business. Uh, I'm very proud of my crew. They're amazing. And we have grown a lot together. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> we do love each other. <laughs> so what is your background from Chile? Well, my parents are from Chile. I grew up here. So I grew up with all the, the Chilean food that you could ever want. Well, and sabores means the flavors, right? The flavors of the South. So right. you, you really get that sense here. You do, you do. Uh -huh. Primarily, Sabores del Sur serves Chilean food, but there's a smattering of Peruvian and other South American uh, foods in there, too. Do you have a dish that you crave that when you walk in the door you start with? I'd say definitely the empanadas. Uh, the empanadas at Sabores del Sur are huge. Huge, exactly. <laughs> they are a, a meal in and of themselves. Chock I mean, full of filling. <laughs> big, baked, I mean, they're, they're literally about this big. Uh -huh. Baked, um, I always get the, uh, the Chilean steak ones. Nice, juicy steak cooked with onions, raisins, olives, and mm -hmm. a slice of uh, hard-boiled egg in there as well. Mm -hmm. And the, and the chef is from Chile. The chef She's, is from Chile. She wanted yes. those flavors to, to really come through. Absolutely. Right? Flavors of the childhood as well. So you said the empanadas are big. They're big. <laughs> so we tried three of them because mm -hmm. we were eating as, as a group. And we tried the steak, which was delicious. We had the chicken. And the other one that was a real standout was the shrimp and cheese. Because how can you yeah. go wrong with shrimp and cheese? Absolutely. And Yael, you lived in, in South America. I did. I correct? lived in Argentina. And my parents mm -hmm. are also from Uruguay. Right. So we recognize a lot of the dishes. I went with my parents because I oh. knew it was a spot that they would like. <laughs> uh, my mom got a churrasco sandwich, I think oh, it was. Yeah. And that's actually very popular in Uruguay. They call mm -hmm. it a chivito. Okay. So it kind of took us all back to summer vacations in Uruguay. Oh. And the feeling of the restaurant felt very homey. They came to talk to us in Spanish. It seemed like they really cared about their patrons and about the food they made. And Thank explain you. that Definitely. sandwich to me a little bit more. It's basically a steak sandwich. Mm -hmm. So it's got steak and tomatoes, lettuce, mayonnaise, fluffy bread. Don't mm. forget the avocado. The avocado, that's, that's a California Which is Chile, touch. right there. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. They absolutely. don't have that in Uruguay, but they should. <laughs> <laughs> and what else did you have? Oh, we had so many things. We had the chicken thighs that were like rubbed with like an achote or a chili and grilled with salad. And the salad dressing, we had to ask about it. So we were like, what, what is this? Mm -hmm. And she goes, oh, you'll have to buy my cookbook. And we're like, where's the cookbook? And she goes, I, I haven't written it yet. And we're like, well, we'll do it when it's ready. So she said, instead of putting like the cilantro and the lime and all that on the plate, she threw it in a blender and put it in this bottle. And it was supposed to be for the salad, but we put it on everything. And then the other thing we had, which sounds super simple, was the bistec, uh, bistec a lo pobre. Lo pobre, which you're going to say French fries, rice, steak two fried eggs over easy, but it was really pretty, very carb heavy. So if I ever need to get ready for a triathlon, I know where to go <laughs> eat my so meal. True. Good to know for my next triathlon. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, everything we tried, the soups, the vegan garbanzo soup with the soy uh, riso in it. I haven't tried that one. It was the big hit of the table. Mm -hmm. It had like deep red pepper flavor, the garbanzos, a bunch of spices, and then the soy riso really made it have that unctuous, that really umami, just mm -hmm. real deep. So, mm -hmm. oh, and then the day we went, the only dinner entree available was the um, ceviche. 
And mm -hmm. I find it so interesting that ceviches of other Latin American countries are so different from Mexican yeah. ceviche. Mm -hmm. And it had the corn kernels and all that, that. And we talked to her about it. And you could tell, I mean, as, as corny as it sounds, love is an ingredient. But you yeah. could you could taste that she cared about what she was doing. Um, we also had, well, we had the bistec a la pobre also. Mm -hmm. Big, thick, juicy steak mm -hmm. sitting on a bed of french fries with, with the fried egg on top. I mean, it's it's a cardiologist's dream, <laughs> but um, it's... Heart healthy. It's You're amazing. Married. Yeah, heart healthy, yeah, if you want to keep it ticking. Um, but no, that we, we got that. We also got um, a variation of a typical Chilean dish, the pastel de papas instead of the mm -hmm. pastel de choclo. That's what I got as well, the pastel de choclo. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's definitely not what people expect when they think Latin American. It's looks more like a, something you'd get in the UK. Right. But it's this very cozy winter flavor. It was raining that night we went and it was just mm -hmm. like so satisfying. This like creamy corn, this flavorful beef. And it was almost like you kept finding these little surprises. You'd be like, oh, there's like a raisin, right. there's an egg, there's an olive. And you kept digging and there'd be <laughs> exactly. more. And, right. mm -hmm. and you can have beer or wine. I mean, mm -hmm. right. so. We had sangria mm -hmm. and we had um, a white wine sangria and then something called ponche, which was mm -hmm. red. Mm -hmm. But it didn't have fruit floating around in it. And the red wine was cool, the ponche. But it had a really nice fruit flavor. Right. And it was good to kind of balance out everything else that we were eating. Now, mm -hmm. did you try the alfacotas for dessert? I was going to yeah. say, yes. Yeah. 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 And this is, this, is, this, is so good. this is chef's specialty, right? Empanadas and alfacotas. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> this is the, the South American dessert, right? Yes. So this is something that I think probably every South American country will claim is theirs. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I've had it everywhere in South America. America. <laughs> yes, yes. I think I grew up thinking that alfajores were Uruguayan and right. Argentinian. Yeah. And then, then you go to Argentina. And, yes, but I mean, if it's done right, doesn't matter where and it's from. And this one was done this is good. perfect. Yes. Oh, they're, they're little cookies. They're like a Short sandwich. Bread. Like a little shortbread. Short bread cookies mm -hmm. with what we would call dulce, dulce de leche, leche inside. Mm -hmm. In Chile, it's called manjar. Yeah. <laughs> and we only had two. There was four of us, and we split them mm -hmm. because we had ordered so much food. But right. it, was, it was a perfect ending. All right, Fred, your spot. Give us a quick summary. If you're looking for an authentic South American comfort food sort of meal, Sabor del Sur is the place to go. All right, yeah. South American flavors that hit close to home. Okay, and Tina. If I find myself on that end of the tunnel, empanadas and soup would just hit the spot. If you would like to try Sabores del Sur, it's located on Oak Road in Walnut Creek. The telephone number 925-954-8300. It's open for breakfast and lunch Monday through Saturday, dinner Thursday through Saturday, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $25. Post your favorite food shots on Instagram with the hashtag Bay Area Bites and have a chance to see your food pics on the show. Yael's neighborhood eatery in San Francisco holds a special place in her heart. After subsisting on eggs for dinner most nights, when she and her boyfriend finally received a windfall, they needed a place to celebrate. Their destination did not disappoint, and it was Pearl 6101. Pearl 6101 is a restaurant basically of a group of friends who got together who worked with each other in the past. And we created a Richmond neighborhood restaurant serving new American fare with a lot of seafood, fresh pasta, market inspired dishes, it's Mediterranean, Mediterranean flair. flair. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> I'm Joyce Conway, and we are all part of Pearl 6101, and I'm one of the chefs and co-partners here. I'm Mel Lopez, and I'm the executive chef. I'm Nihil Nazal, the bar director. Our cuisine here is New American, with a lot of Italian and Mediterranean influence. We are very seafood-centric. A lot of our cuisine is based off of seasonality and the farmer's market. So a lot of our repeat customers come here and tell us that they're very happy that we're here, that the Richmond district really needed us, and that um, there's nothing really out here like Pearl, where we offer fresh dishes, great cocktails, and I don't know, just a great atmosphere, like a homey restaurant. Everybody works here together. You have the cooks running food, clearing tables, checking on tables to see how their meal is going. Even the chefs, when they're cooking or expediting, they're running food as well and doing the same thing. And because of that, everybody is getting paid equally. Everyone can live here and take the opportunity of working in a restaurant in San Francisco, 
today and still be able to afford to live here, which I think is a very big thing, um, for sure. All right, so I love the subsisting on just eggs, right? What was that? Yes, so it might not be that dramatic, but my boyfriend was working on a startup at the time and he applied to get funding and so we were trying to save money, trying not to eat out, and Pearl 6101 was a place I had bookmarked for a while and the day he got funding we said, okay, let's celebrate. <laughs> yes, we can throw down without guilt. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you get when you go? I usually get the pasta dishes. This last time we went though, we got the lamb campanelle and that was one of my favorites. It was with lamb sugo, uh, a little bit of chili. It was very, very... It's braised. It's yes. a really deep, deep flavor. Very strong tomato flavors, mm -hmm. very soft, juicy lamb, a little bit of spice. The pasta tastes homemade. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of al dente. Yeah, it's it's. Now, Tina, filling. what did you start with when you went? Oh, we had everything. We had some of the, <laughs> the baked here. ricotta. Mm -hmm. They have a wood-burning oven, mm -hmm. so it was like mixed with herbs and spinach and and a little ramekin, and they gave it to you a little toast. So that was something nice to nibble on while we were trying to devise this menu that we were putting together for the night. Mm -hmm. And where did you move to? We had all three pastas, not the, the um, rice dish. And How many of you were well, there? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back to your, we'll wow. back just, to your just pastas. <laughs> there were actually like, only three of us. <laughs> um, so what did you have, Fred? What, what, what was uh, your experience? We started off with the cauliflower and the uh, Brussels sprout appetizers. And they were roasted and they were just so flavorful. And the mixture of the, the hummus with the cauliflower was just a really good touch. And did you have something to drink when they're known they have some lovely cocktails there? We stuck to the wine. <laughs> you stuck to the wine. They're, they're, the cocktails really, are something to seek very out Very nice wine list. Mm -hmm. We had a, a nice bottle of Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about the pasta, since you had all three of them. <laughs> since I had all three. We had the squid ink pasta. The only thing I didn't like about it was it had too much breadcrumb and it was a mm. little too much. The orange flavor was a little too intense. I really Just wanted to taste the squid ink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was a little sad that <laughs> yeah. that wasn't like in, in the forefront. What else did you uh, have, Fred? We had, uh, actually there was three of us, and we had the fire roasted octopus, mm -hmm. which was just, I mean, it was absolutely incredible. It was grilled, it was a little slightly crunchy on the outside, but tender enough to just cut it with the fork. Anything else? We got the Brussels sprouts as well. Mm -hmm. It was really good. Yeah. Definitely not the Brussels sprouts of your childhood. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tell me about the Brussels sprouts. So they had kind of like a bit of an Asian flavor with bonito flakes, so kind of the smoked fish flavor. Right. Yep. They were very savory, umami flavors. You just couldn't stop eating them. Yeah. And they were called fried Brussels sprouts, so I was expecting something very heavy, but they were pretty light and easy to eat. Um, in terms of drinks, I actually also had uh, the Scarlet Columbine cocktail. Mm. That was really good. I had bourbon, strawberry, sage tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very refreshing. It was almost like a really good summer juice. So. <laughs> All right, dessert. Go for it. Fred? Oh, my God. We had the upside <laughs> down cake. We, we actually got three desserts, so and we? We were gonna, the three of us were going to split them. <laughs> And we almost got into a fight over that upside down cake because we all wanted more of it. And we kept <laughs> trying to like pull the plate towards ourselves and uh, absolutely amazing. Just it's a spice cake. It's a little bit of a spice I'm cake. I'm a sucker and just, for a oh, spice cake. It, it was amazing. What, were they, what, what did you get? I had the, the banana chocolate tart, which mm -hmm. the shell was a little on the thick side. It was graham cracker, but it was a little salty. And we, we actually were fighting well, over the, the crust. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we were fighting over the crust, which was kind of funny. And then we had um, the what you were just talking about right the now. The upside down cake. The upside down cake. So it was like a banana pear upside down right. with spice cake. Yes. So those are like two of my most favorite things in the world. So if that dessert lived down the street for me, I would be in so It would trouble. be your best friend. It, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then we had what basically it was like an adult sundae and like old school spumoni. Uh -huh. It was like a sherry raisin. The sherry raisin sundae. Yeah. Was. And when I say old school spumoni, not that silly pistachio, like the old school with like the with the candied fruits, mm -hmm. almost like fruitcake and an ice cream. That's what this was very, it was very nostalgic A little for bit me. of caramel in there as well. Yes. And, and those two desserts were just mm -hmm. the ones that like kind of like maybe. We also had the guava sorbet, which was just really nice. It wasn't overly sweet, just a real nice ending to the meal. Do you get dessert usually? I'm usually too full, but uh, my brother and his girlfriend actually ordered the guava sorbet. Uh -huh. They have a lot of uh, food restrictions, and so for them to find something on the dessert menu that suited them was really nice. Um, yeah, I don't like things that are overly sweet, so it had kind of almost a salty flavor. I like that. And what about service? 
thought the service was really good. Mm -hmm. um, he uh, was very attentive, answered our questions. Uh, it was great. All right. Well, Yael, this is your spot, so wrap it up for us. It's a great spot to go for a night out with really creative dishes and really good flavors. All right, Fred. I'd say if you're looking for a place to splurge with some amazing food, definitely go there. Okay, and Tina? Go for the desserts. <laughs> I almost want to go back for breakfast to see what the pastries are about. <laughs> All right. If you would like to try Pearl 6101, it's located on California Street in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-592-9777. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Sunday, breakfast and lunch Tuesday through Friday, and brunch on the weekends. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $50. I have to thank my guests on this week's show, Tina Tamale Ramos, who invited us to her favorite spot in Oakland for exceptional seafood at Alamar, Fred Steingraf, who revisits the food of his homeland at his Chilean-inspired pick in Walnut Creek, Sabores del Sur, and Yael Handel, who shared a destination worthy of celebration at Pearl 6101 in San Francisco. Now, we really want to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about, so keep in touch with us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Or better yet, post your favorite food shots on Instagram with the hashtag Bay Area Bites and have a chance to see your food pics on the show. And don't forget that you can watch any of the shows on our website at kqed.org slash check, please. It's where you'll find links to the restaurants and where you'll find my notes on the wines and libations we're drinking today. So join us next time when three more guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check, Please! Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. 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 Tina Tamale Ramos. <laughs> Check, Please! Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable iFlyOAK.com. It's the transplant procedure that didn't just save one life. It saved six. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Redwood Credit Union offers personal and business banking, mobile access, and nationwide ATMs. It's banking for people who call this home and the future we're building together. Redwood Credit Union. Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check, Please! Bay Area. Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com.